Hello students, welcome to my YouTube channel and we are going to continue with the chapter Insulation and Temperature and this video will be the last and the final part for this chapter and in the previous video uh, I had discussed with you all was the insulation, heat budget, factors affecting the temperature, factors affecting the insulation, uh, heating and process or uh, the cooling of the atmosphere, different process related to it. Uh, we had discussed all those topics and today we are going to uh, discuss on the various topics. So first we are going to start with the horizontal distribution of temperature. Okay, so without much further ado or delay, let's start the video. Horizontal distribution of temperature means it is the distribution of temperature across the latitude. Okay, the places which are falling in the same latitude will almost more or less will have the same temperature. Okay, and that temperature is demarcated in the map with the help of an imaginary line. Okay, joining the places of having equal temperature and that uh, we term as isotherms okay so here two different terms are there iso means equal therms mean temperature okay so this is the imaginary line which is drawn on the earth's surface uh, in the uh, like in the map in order to show the places having the same temperature okay now it has its uh, characteristics also so the characteristics of iso uh, isotherms are it runs almost parallel to the latitude okay so it's not actually in the same latitude but it will be almost parallel to it parallel to the latitude next is the isotherms will slightly bend when crossing the landmass to ocean while and vice versa means when it enters from landmass to the ocean it will slightly bend okay as well as when it enters from ocean towards the land again it will slightly bend okay now why it happens is because of the differential heating of land and the ocean okay so the land and the ocean ocean or the water bodies also we can say so the heating time or the cooling time of the land and the ocean or the water bodies are uh, like it differs from one another so that's why the isotherms will not be a straight line but it will be rather a, a curved or bending okay or intended it will be okay the next is the isotherms the distance between the isotherm okay which also indicates the rate of change of temperature okay rate of change of temperature means if the isotherms are very close to each other then it will indicate the rapid change in the temperature acute change in the temperature okay if the isotherms are spacious wide okay then it will indicate the slow change of temperature so these are the characteristics of isotherms okay students so look at this image carefully and here i'm going to show you why the isotherm bends slightly when while crossing the landmass and while crossing the uh, water bodies okay so for that we need to understand the is the differential heating of land and the water which we have done in the previous video also so it will be a short recapitulation also so here let's say this is land and the water now land as we know it is opaque in nature and the water it is transparent so when both the areas will when it receives the insulation when it receives the insulation the water being transparent it will allow the sun rays to penetrate inside whereas the water uh, land will be opaque so it will not allow the sun rays to penetrate okay so here what happens is the water has to be heated up from within so it will take time to get heated up whereas the land the only the outer surface has to be heated up so it will rapidly get heated up okay as a result the temperature of the land and water will differs okay so being transparent it will you know take time to heat it up so if we say the temperature of the sun uh, sorry of the sea is 10 degrees celsius okay at the same time the temperature of the uh, land masses will be 20 degree celsius okay the land will be warmer compared to the uh, water body now let us have look at this this image over here so these are the land masses and this is the uh, the entire other areas are the water bodies okay and let's say this is the latitude of uh, zero degree now let us assume now let us assume that the sun is in the northern hemisphere right now 
in the topic of cancer right now okay so that means uh, the northern part of the um, world is now uh, here enjoying summer season okay now isotherms has to be drawn in that line so i will be drawing an isotherm of 10 degrees celsius for example so the 10 degrees so this is an isotherm of 10 degrees celsius and it is joining the places of having same temperature over the water bodies but over here when it enters the land when it enters the land it will slightly bend towards the polar areas towards the pole it will slightly bend okay now why it will bend towards the polar areas if we continue for example if we continue the isotherm in a straight line over here it might not get the places having the 10 degree celsius of temperature okay because here the land will be warmer compared to the sea in this present area understood so here in order to get the 10 degree celsius of temperature in the land masses it has to move little bit towards the north here during that time the temperature will be warm let's say here 15 degree celsius will be there the land so in order to get the 10 degree celsius the line or the isotherm has to move little bit towards the polar areas okay so the same line when it enters the sea again it's the same line when it enters the sea then it will slightly move or bend towards the equator because here if it is continuous over here then the sea again it might not be in 10 degree celsius it will be much more cooler okay so here it has to again bend towards the uh, equator in order to get the 10 degree celsius of temperature okay so it will continue over here then when it enters the land mass again it will bend a little bit towards the polar areas again when it comes out in the water bodies it will bend towards the equator okay so this happens because of the differential heating of land and the sea so uh, observe this image carefully students over here okay you can see the isotherms which has been drawn in this map okay is not straight okay and uh, here the isotherms are bending when it while crossing the water bodies and when uh, crossing the land masses it is bending isn't it so here this isotherm this is the horizontal distribution of temperature during the month of july means during this time the sun will be shining vertically over the tropic of cancer and in the northern hemisphere okay so you can observe clearly observe the isotherms okay like for example if you follow this 20 degree of isotherm here so in the water bodies is slightly moving or slightly bending towards the equator okay and the same uh, isotherm when it enters the land masses okay it bend towards the polar areas then it comes out again in the water bodies then it again bend towards the equator okay when it enters the land masses again it is bending towards the uh, polar areas isn't it so this happens because of that land uh, the differential heating of land and the water okay now if you observe again the isotherms in the northern hemisphere during the month of july when the sun is vertically in the uh, tropic of cancer you can see the isotherms are spacious in the northern hemisphere whereas it is very closely packed in the southern hemisphere so it also indicates there is a rapid change of uh, temperature in the southern hemisphere because it will be having winter during that time and here in the northern hemisphere since the temperature uh, will be uh, you know um, warmer and there will be very slow change of temperature since sun will be shining vertically in the uh, northern hemisphere okay so this was also one of the characteristics of isotherm now this image shows us the horizontal distribution of temperature okay during the winter months in northern hemisphere the previous image was the summer months in the northern hemisphere now this is the winter months in the northern hemisphere because during that time sun will be shining vertically in the tropic of capricorn that is the southern hemisphere now here also we can clearly observe the isotherms are not straight okay so when during the winter season you can see the isotherms okay when it is in the water bodies it is towards the bending towards the polar areas but when it enters the land masses it is bending towards the equator 
Again, when it comes out from the land masses, enters the water bodies, it is bending towards the pole. Okay, when it, it enters the land masses, again, it is bending towards the equator. Okay, this is also because of that differential heating of the land and water. Because during the uh, winter months in the northern hemisphere, what happens is the ocean is warmer. Okay, and the land masses will be colder. Understood? So, it is just opposite in the July and month of January, the isotherms. In the July, what we have observed, the isotherms, isn't it? It is bending towards the equator in the water bodies and in the land masses, it is bending towards the polar areas. But in winter season, what we have observed, the isotherm is bending towards the polar areas in the water bodies and it is bending towards the equator in the land masses. So students, that was the uh, horizontal distribution of temperature okay, uh, over the earth's surface in the different months. Now we are going to discuss the temperature anomaly. So temperature anomaly means the difference between the mean temperature of any place and the mean temperature of its parallel. Okay, which means, so temperature, anomaly. So, anomaly means the term, term like uh, difference. Okay, the meaning of this term is difference. Now, for example, let us take the latitude of 0 degree equator. Okay, now let's say the uh, mean temperature of this latitude is 20 degree Celsius, the latitude of this. So that means all the places which are falling in this latitude will have the 20 degree Celsius of temperature. But there are other factors also which influence the temperature of the place. For example, altitude okay, is also one of the factor. Now let's say there is a mountain present in the equator in some places. Okay, or a hill it is present in the equator. Now, because of the altitude, the temperature when we go up higher or ascent of 165 meter, isn't it? There will be the decrease of temperature by 1 degree Celsius. Okay, that is normal lapse rate which we have learned in the previous video also. So, if the equator or if the mean average temperature of this latitude is 20 degree Celsius, Okay, but the mean temperature of this place will not be 20 degree Celsius. Why? Because of the factor altitude. Okay, so here let's say the temperature is 15 degree Celsius. So the difference between the mean temperature of this place and the mean temperature of this latitude, okay, is known as temperature anomaly. Now the next topic is the range of temperature. Now range of temperature, again the range of temperature, again it means the difference between the temperature. So here it is of two types, uh, that is dunaral or daily and annual range of temperature. Okay, so daily or the dunaral range of temperature means like within 24 hours of time, the highest temperature recorded and the lowest temperature recorded. The difference between that which we called as the daily or the dunaral range of temperature temperature now annual range of temperature uh, refers to the you know the average temperature of the hottest month in the year and the average temperature of the coldest month of the year okay so difference between that uh, temperature we call it as annual range of temperature okay so daily means within 24 hours the highest temperature recorded and the lowest temperature recorded difference is the range of or the diurnal range of temperature and uh, in a year okay the average of the hottest month and the average of the coldest month when we take the difference of that we call it as annual range of temperature okay uh, so just now we have discussed the horizontal distribution of temperature so let us discuss the vertical distribution of temperature now Okay, so as we have learned with the ascent of 165 meter, there is a decrease by 1 degree Celsius in temperature. Now that phenomena is known as normal lapse rate. So the same thing is followed in the troposphere also. So the different, the, you know, the atmosphere is uh, the structure of the atmosphere. There are the different layers, isn't it? So here, that is the vertical distribution in the different layers, the distribution of temperature. Okay, so in the troposphere, uh, like we follow the normal lapse rate with the increase of height by 165 meter, there is a decrease of temperature. So in the temp uh, troposphere, the temperature will decrease with the increasing height. Okay, 
and there comes the tropopause in between uh, over here in the troposphere and the stratosphere where there is a pause in the temperature neither it increases nor it decreases okay and in when it enters the stratosphere again the temperature will increase with the increasing height because of the presence of ozone and in between stratosphere and mesosphere again the stratopause is there where the temperature will become constant so and it enters after the stratopause it enters we enter the mesosphere in the mesosphere again with the increasing height the temperature will decrease okay then the mesos mesopause will come where again the temperature will become constant then the layer of ionosphere will start then in the ionosphere again with the increasing height the temperature will also increase so as you can see over here there is an uh, alternative rise and fall of temperature as we are going up in the space okay so that is your vertical distribution of temperature next topic is again very important that is the inversion of temperature up uh, till now like in the troposphere we have learned that the temperature falls with the altitude isn't it uh, when we increase in height the temperature decreases but sometimes in the troposphere also what happens is the temperature will rise with the altitude means while going up the temperature will also increase okay so this we call it as the uh, inversion of temperature in other term we can also say that with the decrease in height okay with the decrease in height the temperature should increase but here what happens with the decrease in height the temperature will also decrease okay the uh, height is also decreasing or altitude is also decreasing as the temperature also decreases okay so this we call it as inversion of temperature so basically uh, why it happens over here is you see the image over here let's say this is the earth surface okay and near the earth surface if the cold air mass is present okay and in the upper layer of atmosphere warm air masses is present so in that case what happen is there will be the inversion of temperature okay so when the increasing in height the temperature is supposed to decrease but because of the presence of warm air the temperature will increase okay so this we call as the inversion of temperature so behind that also there are many factors like long nights clear sky ice cover okay and even air drainage also now let us uh, see each of those factors individually now long nights during the winter season basically we observe the long nights isn't it? so during that time what happen is lots of radiation will takes place terrestrial radiation will takes place from the land surface okay so because of the terrestrial radiation the land will lose its heat okay so land will quickly radi uh, like, like rapidly cools down okay as a result the air which is present near the earth surface the air which is present near the earth surface will also cool down because of the influence of the land surface whereas the upper air mass which is there the upper air masses will be warm because the radiation is also present over there it will absorb some amount of radiation so the temperature of the upper air mass will be warmer but the temperature of the cold air masses which is present here near the earth surface okay will be cooler so because of that there is the uh, during the long nights we observe is the inversion of temperature now clear sky is also another factor now the terrestrial radiation which is uh, Uh, the present during the longer nights or the, during the night time now what happen is if there is a cloud cover if it is present then the heat which is radiated back it won't be able to escape okay rather it will get trap inside it so as a result the whole uh, like you know the air will remain warmer okay so during the uh, winter nights and all you just uh, notice that uh, you know it's much more colder because it will be cloudless skies sky during the uh, night time okay so the lots of radiated heat from the earth surface will be able to escape in the um, at uh, in the uh, space okay 
so there will be the inversion of temperature now ice cover now generally if uh, area suppose in the uh, valley area it is there okay now the ice is present over here in the valley areas and all now due to the presence of the ice cover the lower air temperature will be uh, cooler okay compared to the temperature of the upper air so as a result here also there will be the inversion of temperature now air drain drainage here uh, what happens is like during the longer nights and all the air which is present in the upper uh, like you know the uh, altitude okay it will rapidly cools down and it will become dense okay so when it becomes dense it will become heavy and it will start sliding downwards towards the valley it will start moving downwards towards the valley now when it descend downwards towards the valley the warm air which is present in the valley area will be forced to rise above okay and that area will be taken by the cold air so as a result here also we can observe the inversion of temperature so this kind of phenomena when it takes place basically in the mountain and the valley area it is known as air drainage okay so this was the uh, inversion of temperature students okay students so with this topic we conclude our video for today and uh, thank you for watching and please like the video and don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you everyone